Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, FAA allows more simulator training to count for an instrument rating, Carter Copter plans to break some records, the B-29 named DOC performs another engine run. I'm Bray Cross, it's April 12th, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The FAA has released a final rule that will allow instrument pilot candidates to make more use of simulators in obtaining their rating. The use of aviation training devices for instrument flight training has been recognized as a valuable tool since their introduction in World War II. However, their regulations allowing their use to be logged for the purpose of obtaining an instrument rating have lagged behind the development of modern simulators. The FAA says a new rule relieves burdens on pilots seeking to obtain aeronautical experience, training, and certification by increasing the allowed use of aviation training devices. In the summary of the rulemaking, the agency wrote, quote, These actions are necessary to bring the regulations in line with the current capabilities of aviation training devices and the needs and activities of the general aviation training community and pilots. The proposal with all the details is being published by the Federal Register this week and will become effective 30 days after publication. Carter Aviation Technology says it has developed a configuration for its aircraft that can break the Rotorcraft world records for speed, range, and altitude. These are records that have been unbroken for half a century. Jay Carter said, quote, We had this concept on the board for several years and decided it was time to move forward. We expect to achieve speeds in excess of 400 knots, distances greater than 2,000 nautical miles, and altitudes of over 50,000 feet. To achieve this performance, Carter will employ two Honeywell turbofan engines, coupled with its slowed rotor compound technologies. He said this configuration will also give the aircraft the ability to break the time to climb record for rotorcraft. Carter said this configuration will make an ideal VTOL business jet that could provide point-to-point -point transportation for up to six passengers. Carter envisions this aircraft will open up other possibilities for other variants, both larger and smaller, with different mission profiles. The company is now formulating business plans to secure partners and assemble a team to complete the detailed design, fabrication, and ultimately the record-breaking demonstration of the Carter Copter configuration. After the break, another B-29 may take to the skies soon. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. After a long cold winter, the team restoring the B-29 dock rolled the iconic bomber out of a hangar and started the engines for the first time this year on Saturday, and the team says they are anticipating a first flight soon. Warbird News reports that one of the final airworthiness requirements to be checked off the list was the installation of new tires on the airplane. The engine run will be repeated with FAA inspectors on the premises soon, which is expected to lead to the final sign-off by the agency, clearing Doc for her first flight. The B-29 will also have to receive formal clearance from the Defense Department to permit the bomber to use the longer runway at McConnell Air Force Base in Wichita, Kansas to conduct the flight test program. Every Tuesday, we look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. Here is this week's Aero Calendar. Sometimes hometown air shows can be more fun, and this is the case on April 16th in Durant, Oklahoma. The Take to the Skies Air Show features an exciting air show and a family festival all rolled into one event. Performers include solo acro flying, formation acro flying, and even a MiG-17. Oklahoma's renowned performer Randy Harris will perform with his home-built Skybolt 300. If you have the urge to travel, head for Shanghai, China for the Asian Business Aviation Conference and Exhibition known as A-Base 2016. From today, April 12th through the 14th, A-Base brings together over 8,500 business aviation leaders, entrepreneurs, and other purchase decision makers. In partnership with the Shanghai Airport Authority and co-hosted by the MBAA and the Asian Business Aviation Association, this is the place where deals are made. 
The new Smyrna Beach Sky Fest takes place April 15th through the 17th. It's one of the biggest, most popular events in Central Florida, featuring night and day air shows, entertainment, a huge carnival, interactive exhibits, helicopter rides, aircraft displays, and dozens of vendors. Even hot air balloons are part of the venue, which includes a nighttime glow. Both tethered and free flight balloon rides are available. On April 16th, you'll find the CAF Syntex Fly-In or Drive-In event in San Marcos, Texas at Redbird Skyport. The commemorative Air Force Syntex Wings Fly-In or Drive is held in support of their neighbors at the CAF. Redbird Skyport will be offering a $1 per gallon fuel discount to anyone flying in for this fun-filled family event. There will be a B-25, C-45, T-6, helicopter rides and other World War II airplanes on display, lots of food and vendors. Trophies will be awarded. After these messages, the FAA Deputy Administrator shows up at Sun and Fun. Concord's recombinant gas RG Series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. FAA Deputy Administrator Mike Whitaker visited the Sun and Fun International Fly-In and Expo last week. His visit was to promote the agency's ongoing partnership with the general aviation community to improve safety through enhanced FAA data exchange. Airmen with the 35th Fighter Wing conducted a two-day surge exercise April 4th and 5th with F-16 Fighting Falcons at Mizawa Air Base in Japan. The exercise validated the wing's ability to generate aircraft in a simulated combat scenario. The Commercial Space Flight Federation praised both SpaceX and Bigelow Aerospace for the successful launch of a Dragon cargo spacecraft to the International Space Station and the recovery of the booster. They said reusable orbital rockets are key to a more cost-effective space future. EAA provides vast resources for aircraft home builders. To that end, they have just announced their new guidebook for helping builders perform the firewall forward engine installation. The book written by Dave Prizio is titled Powering Your Plane. Flight Design USA has authorized the installation of ADSB capabilities on their CT line of light sport airplanes. A letter of intent has been signed between Flight Design USA and Free Flight Systems to allow installation of their Ranger ADSB system. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. John Secord is no stranger to fast flying in his regularly flown Glass Air Super 2. So last Sunday's Sunshine Express 400 race from Greenwood, South Carolina to Winter Haven, Florida was an opportunity to race in the fairly new venture, which debuted last year as the Race to the Sun. What's unusual about John's victory in the race is that he won in his class by flying a Myers 200C, which is a stock four-place airplane built in 1964. Secord said, quote, The Myers design was so far ahead of its time when it debuted that it's not old now, even after 50 years, and it's definitely not outdated. Secord completed the 400-mile race with an average speed of 223 miles per hour. His classification for competition was based on horsepower, yet he actually came very close to beating airplanes in the higher horsepower class. Supported by Global Parts Aero, John plans to follow up his win in the Sunshine Express 400 by entering the Texoma Air Race in Sherman, Texas on April 16th. Here's another example in aviation of what was good then is still good now. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us in a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. 
From the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.